Yeah, I think we should make a start. And as people join, they will join. Well, I'm just so excited that you're here. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> so I'm just going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this time. that We have to share sweet fellowship together. Father, as your word comes to life, I pray that it will change our prayer lives. I pray that it will encourage us. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And amen. Amen. So, everything by prayer and nothing without prayer. So, just really quickly, we will go over a few points from last week. And it will be nice to hear your input. You can interrupt me at any point because sometimes I find myself talking for the whole thing and people don't really contribute. So it would be so nice to hear. So last week we looked at a couple of reasons why we should do everything by prayer. So the first point is that prayer bring, brings God into every situation. So it's very important that we acknowledge God in every situation. Otherwise, it just won't be covered in prayer and it's open to attack. Amen. And we also looked at prayer brings a supernatural element into every situation. So we spoke about trusting the Lord with all our hearts and not depending on our own understanding. It's really, really important to seek his will in everything that we do. And he will definitely show us which path to take. So he will definitely guide us, but we have to let him in. It's a relationship. So we have to choose the right way and choose to allow him in our lives and in every area. Sometimes we keep certain areas to ourselves. Sometimes instead of praying, we are rather complaining, worrying or overthinking. But we have to remember that the Bible says that worrying does not add anything to our lives. Amen. And also... Amen. We looked at the fact that prayer brings a blessing into every situation. So I, I really like this when Jesus, he had such a thankful attitude and with the five loaves and two fishes, he gave thanks before he distributed the food and the disciples were like, it's not going to be enough, but he already was thankful. And that thankfulness, that gratitude um, lack of complaining and far from it, it multiplied everything and it brought blessing. So it's really important that we are thankful for what we already have. And that kind of attitude can only bring us blessings. Amen. Okay, so Amen. we're going to look at three more points today on the topic of prayer. So the first point we're going to look at is that Prayer brings angelic involvement into every situation. So let's look at Luke chapter 22, verse 41 to 43. I'll read the NLT version. And it says, he walked away about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, Please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. Amen. Amen. Ricardo, you are welcome. Thank you for joining us today. So angels can be involved in every area of your life if you want them to be. Angels are released when prayers go up. Notice how angels appeared when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. So I also want to look at other scriptures about angelic presence because angels, you know, can come and help us in different areas of our lives. When we pray, this is what they're tasked to do to just help us in the spiritual realm. So Psalms chapter 91, verse 11 to 12. Ricardo, can you hear me? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, thank you so much for being here. Hope you enjoy it. So Psalms chapter 91, verse 11 to 12. 
it says, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. Hallelujah. So I know Amen. Psalm 91 is something that we can pray over our lives. It's such a beautiful psalm. The book of Psalm is full of prayers. It's really lovely. Sometimes, you know, you can start off your prayer with that book. It's just nice. But everybody has an angel as assigned to them from birth. But there's multiple angelic protection as we go through life. So just know that all the Lord wants to do is give us that abundance that he died for. He suffered and died on the cross for us to be free, for us to have break, not for us to suffer. So we shouldn't think like with a slave mentality. We can go to our father and ask for anything because we are his children. So we just have to have faith and believe. So also want to look at Genesis chapter 24, verse 7. And it says, For the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and my native land, solemnly promised to give this land to my descendants. He will send his angel ahead of you, and he will see to it that you find a wife there for my son. So as I said, just angels are sent on tasks to do certain jobs as we pray. And also there's angelic presence for us wherever we go. The angel, as we see here, can go before us. So if you're starting a new job, if you're moving to a new home, that's why it's good to pray for the will of God, because he will send his angelic presence to the places that we are supposed to be. So definitely know and believe that he will send angels ahead before we get to a certain destination, before our prayer is answered. Amen. So Amen. this is this is a good example. This is one of my favorite examples, actually, because um, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they believed boldly in God. They did not want to bow down to idols. And it's just so lovely how they just they're just ready to die. They're ready to die for their faith. And I just wonder today how many of us will be ready to die for our faith. But it's just so beautiful how bold they were how trusting they were of God. So let's just look at Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god Accept their own God. Amen. I received the boldness to be ready to die for God. Amen. Because Amen. his loving kindness is better than life. It says in Psalms 63 that because his loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise him. Thus I will bless him while I live. His ways and everything is better than this life itself, anyway. So that's the best way to go, really. <laughs> to be with the Lord seriously like this is just beautiful so they did not want to worship an idol but they were genuine in their belief in God and unashamed an angel was sent to help them never feel like you have to lie about anything because it shows that you don't trust in God I mean this is just a classic example we have to actually just know that do you know what? I'm going to do God's way no matter what. Nobody can intimidate me or make me feel any type of way to feel like I have to be dishonest because I trust God. I know he's got my back. I know he will come through for me. And they were just like, regardless of what happens, we know that God will rescue us. But even if he doesn't, we're willing to die for God because we know that he is true. He is not a God of any scam. He's not a God that he should lie. He is faithful and true. Ask yourself whether you truly know your God, this Jesus that we say we serve. Do we truly know him and trust him to Amen. death? Hallelujah. So I just, maybe just go and read Daniel 3 and just really just see that beautiful story. Okay, so let's move on. So the next point is that 
prayer brings the great promises of God into every situation in your life. John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24 says that at that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the father directly and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. So there are great promises of prayer lined up in the word of God for you. Jesus promised many things if you pray. Every time you pray, you activate many promises that have been made. So definitely important to use scriptures to pray as well. You know, speak scriptures over your life. You know, if you want to work on being slow to speak, just declare that over your life. Just, just use that scripture about being slow to speak, slow to anger and quick to listen. There's certain declarations that we must make over our lives if we want to see things change. But there are great promises of God into every situation in our lives. And I think that if we had everything just ready for us and everything was nice, we wouldn't need God. But sometimes God brings us through situations to develop our character because if we just get everything that we want then what kind of characters would we have it's a question so it's important that we just believe develop your faith with the word that actually prayer will bring great promises of god into your life so luke chapter 1 verse 45 says you are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. So we're just going to look at um, a situation where Hannah prayed and it came to pass. So we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 18. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 9 to 18. I'll read from the NLT just so that it's easier. Okay. So once after a sacrificial meal at Shiloh, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance of the tabernacle. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow. O Lord of heaven's armies, if you will look upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime and a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord. His hair will never be cut. So we actually see there the, the relationship that she had with God and you see that her making a vow there. But let's just continue to read verse 12. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving but hearing no sound, he thought she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk, he demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh, no, sir, she replied. I haven't been drinking wine or anything stronger, but I am very discouraged, and I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Don't think I'm a wicked woman for I have been praying out of great anguish and sorrow. In that case, Eli said, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. She went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. So we see that... Um, we see in the, in the next verse that the Lord remembered her plea and she gave birth to her son. She kept her vow and she was thankful. So it's just an example that when we pray and we pray in faith, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. So remember that we serve a living God. We don't serve a God that wants to suffer us, to punish us. As far as we are in line with God, walking in his will, you know, really being obedient to him, there's a reward for it. But there's a condition for the reward. 
if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, there's a promise, there's, there's a certain condition, there's an obedience we have to have in order to be rewarded. So may God have mercy on us. And you can see here that Hannah really wanted her son. She really, you know, she felt bad about it. She was crying to the point where she was questioned whether she was actually drunk. There's a certain desperation sometimes that we may have about something in our lives, but the Lord has mercy and he will definitely bring it to pass. So yes, prayer definitely brings great promises of God into every situation in our lives. I don't know if anyone has anything to add, no pressure if you don't, but we will just continue to the next point. So prayer brings the mighty Holy Spirit into every situation. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Spirit because he's our helper, he's our comforter, he's our guide. So Acts chapter 4, verse 31. After this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. Do you not want the Holy Spirit to be involved in what you are doing? The Holy Spirit brings the power of God. We need the Holy Spirit. He is our helper. It's so important to have the Holy Spirit because not having the Holy Spirit is like having a car with no petrol. It's like having about to cook a meal with no oil. We need the extra addition. We need to be able to hear from God. We need to feel the presence of God. These are the things that the Holy Spirit brings, making God real to us. There's definitely a place for the Holy Spirit. And if you are struggling, if you feel like, oh, you know, I want to I want to know this Holy Spirit, pray about it. Pray, oh, Lord, reveal the Holy Spirit to me. Show me your ways. I want to be more like you. Teach me, Lord. These are sometimes prayers that I have for certain areas of my life. Oh, Holy Spirit, guide me in this area. Guide me in that area. Because it's so needed. And I've seen a difference in the fruits of the Spirit in my life. The more that I've prayed, the more that I've searched the more that I've read books about it, um, currently reading the book called Good Morning Holy Spirit, <laughs> how to check, and another book called Seven Things That the Holy Spirit Will Do For You. So I'm just really being intentional and trying to grow in that area. So we need the Holy Spirit in every situation. We need to be able to be sensitive to the direction of God through the power of the Holy Spirit what is the next instruction and it's the same holy spirit that raised jesus from the dead that lives inside of us but we have to grow as christians we have to develop we have to feed the spirit with the word of god and stay connected to god in prayer amen are you with me ricardo are you with me sister anita is there anything that you have to add anything to encourage us or have i said it all <laughs> Okay. All right. So let's move on. You've said it all. <laughs> okay. Powerful. All right. So let's move on. So prayer destroys demonic power that is against you in every situation. So we have to understand that once we give our life to Christ, once we become Christians, there's a war. Like our life is a war in order to get to next stages, you know, the devil tries to block us, sending demons to, to, to slow us down. It could be maybe, I don't know, food addictions. It could be generational things that are happening to us, catching up with us, certain things along the way that can cause us to stumble, certain friends that come into our lives, distraction. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you might be a people pleaser and you might find it difficult to say no, and that could affect your relationship with God because God might be telling you to do something and then you're just like listening to a friend or you're rather listening to other people around you. But there's definitely demonic power in every situation. But thank God that he has made us victorious. Hallelujah. He died on the cross so that we could live abundant lives, so that we could have the authority. And he has given us the authority. He has given us 
prayer. He has given us his word. He has revealed everything to us. There's nothing that the highest sacrifice was the death on the cross. So we can't say, oh Lord, you know, you haven't done this for me. He has done the, given the ultimate sacrifice. So it's up to us to actually believe what the word of God says and take authority and actually be bothered to have a prayer life, you know, make the effort, you know, whether it's we have to wake up early, however we decide to structure it, however our lifestyles are, there's a way that we can actually cultivate and have and maintain a consistent prayer life. So Matthew chapter 12, verse 29 says, for who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and then plunder his house. So in every situation, there are demons and demon powers that are at work. Definitely the attacks will come, but you just have to know that we are victorious. You are victorious. We cannot live our lives in fear. You know, the devil will never stop. The devil will keep on trying, keep on trying. Remember that the Bible says that the devil left, but came back at an opportune time. So the devil will try and come back to tempt you in particular areas, to check, to test you in certain areas. And it's so, sometimes it's so subtle the enemy might be trying to upset you, might try to spoil your day, may try to use people around you. If they can't get your, your best friend, they will try and get your husband, try and get your wife, try and get your colleagues, try to get your siblings, someone to upset you, someone to cause you to say something over your life or to do something that might block a certain blessing. But thank God for the word of God. We need to be steps ahead, recognizing the devices of the devil and realizing that, you know what? He's trying to bring us down because he is already destined for hell. But in Jesus' name, everybody under the sound of my voice, we will make it to heaven victoriously and we will overcome strongholds and struggles in our life because we have the revelation of prayer. Amen. So they, these are invisible forces as real, as real as you can see that you can see me on the screen as real as, I don't know, the furniture around you. It's just real. And it's not for you to walk in paranoia. It's for you to walk in wisdom. And it's for you to be strategic. There is a way that we can surprise the devil with a surprise. We can choose to follow the word of God. We can choose to overcome certain areas. If you're struggling with unforgiveness, maybe, and it's been something in your life that's been a struggle, struggle, struggle. You can actually choose. You can actually say, do you know what? I'm going to take my authority back. I'm going to take what God has for me. I'm going to choose to forgive because actually forgiveness is, the, is, is what gives us freedom. Forgiveness gives us the ability to be forgiven by God. So definitely can choose to walk in a certain authority and you see, you know, Closing the door to the devil, like doing, following the word of God is pretty much closing the entry points of the devil into our lives. So using forgiveness as an example, if we choose to forgive, that opens the door for God to forgive us. It opens the door for us to have a valid prayer life, because if you can't get past that point where you're not forgiven because you haven't forgiven others, then God is not going to honor. He's not going to answer your prayer. You know, prayer is supposed to be like a sweet incense for up to God. And if you can't get over certain things in your life and you're not even trying to work on them. See, when we're in the world, we can be slaves to sin. But when we're in Christ, we are slaves to his word. It turns around and we, we, we become chasing righteousness and whatever we're struggling with. Yes, we know we're struggling with it. But the whole point is to become better people through the word of God. The whole point is growth and development. So don't let demons, all these small demons that you can, that God has made you victorious through what he did for us. Don't let this hold you back. Just overcome by prayer and be open with God. Like nobody's listening. Just tell God your struggles. Lord, I'm struggling in this area. Lord, I'm struggling with anger. I'm struggling with laziness. I'm struggling with procrastination. And find scriptures and declare them over your life. And just surprise the devil. Surprise the devil and grow in your Christian faith. So there are demons that are always working against you. 
whether you believe it or not. I mean, sometimes people might think it's an obsession. Like sometimes people complain and say, oh, it's not every time bind this and bind that spirit. Sometimes this is just happening because of this. Sometimes I just have hay fever because there's pollen in the air. Well, why is it that you have hay fever and someone else doesn't have hay fever? Learn to, to pray against these things. Just pray against them. It might sound minor, but life is spiritual. So it might sound extra, but surely you want to be free. So pray against these things. Amen. So we have just looked at everything by prayer. Does anyone have anything to add to this today? Anything at all? Powerful. So if you've made it up to this point, I just want to give you an opportunity to give your life to Christ. If you're not living for Christ, if you feel like God has been drawing you, because the Holy Spirit, what he does is he draws us to him, that we would give our lives to Christ. So I just want you to say this prayer after me. And if you really mean it, if you really want to have a personal relationship with Jesus, please repeat this after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I am a sinner. Please forgive me all of my sin and mistakes. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. I confess today that you are my Lord and personal Savior. Amen. So if you said that prayer, congratulations best decision that you'll ever make is to live for Christ. There's no promise that you will live, you know, there's no perfection here, but Jesus will guide you every step of the way through challenges. He will be there with you. He will guide you. You will see peace in your life. You will see changes. Definitely join a Bible believing church. We are Master C Chapel International Barking. You are so welcome. Ricardo, I have been inviting you for a while now, so it will be amazing. If you could join us, you're welcome. We're quite a small church, but we're mighty. And we just love the Lord. We have fun every Sunday. We like to dance, sing, and all of that great stuff. And our pastor, Reverend, will preach the word powerfully and your life will change. So definitely join us, Ricardo. That, that part is for you. Everybody else here goes to our church. You are very, very welcome. So I'm just going to close in prayer. And I pray that today encourage you some way, shape or form to just bring everything to God in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you once again for this sweet fellowship, this gathering, O oh Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, as you have taught us that everything by prayer and nothing without prayer, I pray that your precious people will bring everything, every struggle, they'll bring it to you, O oh Lord Jesus. They'll no longer hold back and keep things to themselves, but they will rather give everything to you in prayer and understand that there'll be angelic presence, that your Holy Spirit will be with them and you will guide them and you will help them through any struggles that they may have. Father, help us to see that we are victorious. Help us to see that we've overcome. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining, guys. And by the Thank day you. I'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.